Stanford University. Welcome to Stanford's 126th opening convocation. Welcome, class of 2020 and transfers, parents and family members. And welcome to our new president, Mark Tessier-Levine. What is a convocation, you might ask? It is literally a calling or a gathering together, an assembly. But this is a very special ritual gathering together, formally marking the beginning of your time here at Stanford and the opening of the new school year. So let's mark this new beginning by taking a moment for reflection, appreciation, acknowledgement, and gratitude. Let's take a moment to pause and look at everything and everyone around us. In this moment, we appreciate all those gathered here today new students, new president. This is now your community, your fam, your squad, your crew, your peeps, <laughs> however you want to put it. 
These are the people with whom you will share your hopes and joys. Yes, your disappointments and failures and your discoveries and excitements over the next few years. In this moment, we appreciate the natural beauty of this place, the glory of this day. And in doing so, we acknowledge that this university was built on ancestral Mwekma Ohlone tribal land, or Mwekma Taruk, the Chechenyo language word for house of the people. In this moment, we appreciate the architectural glories of this campus and especially this beautiful quad. And in doing so, we acknowledge the vision and foresight of Jane and Leland Stanford, who founded this extraordinary and innovative university 125 years ago. In this moment, we appreciate all who make this university run smoothly, from those who work in the dorms, to those who teach, to those who carry out its administration with skill and efficiency. And in doing so, we give very particular and special thanks for the work of Provost John Echemendi at this, his final convocation in his role as Provost. And in this moment, we reflect on all that has brought us to this place today and appreciate all those who have supported us in our journey. In doing so, we give thanks for all that has been, for all that is, and for all that will be in the years to come. And now it is my very great pleasure to introduce the other Dean Shaw, Dean Richard Shaw, the man who admitted you all, the Dean of Admissions. Thank you. President Tessier Levine, trustees, deans, faculty, staff, parents, and friends. What a spectacular day. The sky is blue, the sun is shining, and I can see with perfect 2020 vision <laughs> that the class of 2020 has arrived. Whoa, that's good. But right now, before you settle in to the mature and intellectual life as a Stanford undergraduate, I want to hear all together and at the top of your lungs just how great it is to be here. Go Stanford, go Cardinal! You're amazing. <laughs> That's the sound of pure happiness. And on behalf of the entire Stanford community, welcome to the class of 2020 and welcome to our awesome new transfer students. <clears throat> Did you know you were admitted from the largest applicant pool in Stanford's history? Yeah, you knew that. We received just shy of 46,000 freshmen and transfer applications, and 1,781 of you are matriculating today. As a class, you're stunningly diverse by all possible measures. You come from all 50 states and 69 countries. 10% of you hold international citizenship. Women outnumber men by 23.
and 15% of you are among the first in your families to attend a four-year college. Our transfer class, largest in recent years, includes seven military veterans. We chose each and every one of you for your unique combination of abilities, talents, and qualities. We also chose you for your unique story. While of course you are smart, you're also so much more. When we reviewed your application, we listened to your voice, your individuality, your perspective, your life experiences, your sense of humor, your hopes and dreams, and your heart. You cannot be typecast except perhaps for the incredible potential you all share. I have had the good fortune to admit many classes over the years, and I can confirm that every single one of you belongs. You are home here, not in the sense of replacing your true home, but rather in a way that allows you the comfort and belonging of home. I was out visiting the residence halls this morning, and I found myself wishing I were moving in. <laughs> there were cheers and music and hugs and dancing. There was unpacking and meeting roommates, making plans, and the hopeful beginnings of new friendships. These first moments of independence are a chance to welcome into your life new voices, friends, mentors from all backgrounds and perspectives. This will be a profound change. You will be here with fellow students from all over the world who are from distinctly different life experiences and points of view. Be open, reach out, and connect with one another with humility and grace, and the parameters of family will expand exponentially. These are the people who will be with you when you try something new and when you take on new challenges. They will be there for you when you succeed and you wish you could, do, you know, you wish you have, could have done better. They will help you become the person you want to be. This week, I've been thinking about kindness a value I was reminded of in a letter I recently received unsolicited from a high school teacher. She felt compelled to write because of the admiration and pride she holds in having taught and known one of you. She wrote that her student is one of the most genuine, selfless, and caring young adults I have ever known. And she went on to describe an instance of this student helping someone in need. There are not many teenagers in this consumer-driven world today, she wrote, that would take the time for such selfless act for those less fortunate. When things don't go as you hope they will, this is the person who will be right there with you. Because this family, this is family and this is home, a place of kindness, empathy, friendship, and caring, a place where you can learn, grow, and thrive. You are starting a new, amazing chapter full of opportunities and possibilities, and we are so happy that you're here. Welcome to Stanford. Welcome to the place that you belong. I now deliver you to the undergraduate schools and their representative, the Vice Provost for Undergraduate Education and Professor in the Humanities, Harry J. Elam, Jr. Thank you, Dean Shaw, for those wonderful remarks and for bringing to Stanford this amazing new class. As Vice Provost for Undergraduate Education, and on behalf of the Stanford faculty and staff, 
following the ritual of convent convocation, it is my honor to accept you from the Dean of Admissions and welcome you, our remarkable transfer students, and our incredible class of 2020 to Stanford University. <laughs> students, I know that you've waited a long time for this day. Earlier this summer, you probably started letting yourself imagine what might be, how you might feel, who you might meet upon arrival at Stanford. Your mind may have gone spinning with different outcomes and scenarios, trying to predict every little detail of your soon-to-be too long anticipated life on the farm. There were the big questions. Who would your friends be? Would you fit in? And then the less existential, but no less plaguing concerns. Would you like your RA? What is a RA? <laughs> Where do you do laundry? Or rather, how do you do laundry? <laughs> and just what happens when you wash those reds and whites together? <laughs> and then August came along, and some of your friends and family members trundled off to college, and you had to wait and wonder when would be your time. And so you probably read closely every Stanford email, watched every Stanford video, probably twice, dutifully filled out your approaching Stanford forms. Perhaps you memorized the Stanford hymn, maybe even added a funky bass line to it. <laughs> to pass the time, perhaps you tried to create an algorithm using big data that could decipher who your new roommate would be. <laughs> but we know it didn't work. <laughs> now, this day has finally arrived, and you too have arrived, greeted by your RAs who knew your name. Maybe surprised you a bit, didn't it? So now, here at last, with all of us now, I hope with a dawning sense that you have finally landed at your new home, ready to begin your new life. You are entering Stanford at a crucial moment in time, a moment lifted by the highest possibilities and greatest hopes, but also a moment made keener by and more poignant by the knowledge that we stand on the precipice of certain change and unprecedented global challenges shaped by ongoing tensions between careful design and extraordinary innovation, Stanford, as you enter, now sits at the top of the academic world, almost by every measure. And you are entering it at a most auspicious moment, for you are the very first class under our new president. And therefore, you are also the first to usher in with our new president, president this thrilling new era in Stanford's history. Who knows what this era will bring? Well, I can assure you that it promises you adventures not yet realized, opportunities not yet known, experience not yet even imagined. Finding your purpose and path may at times be direct and at other times may whine. Stanford's unique culture is one that embraces the uncommon, uncertain route. After all, Stanford's history is about taking the less predictable trail. We are different. We encourage the unconventional, those mental bends that can turn you in remarkable new directions. Remember, Unburdened by 350 years of ivy, Stanford isn't bound by, nor does it cling to outdated traditions, but rather celebrates the fresh growth and spirit of invention. From the outset, we were built on an inclusive vision and expansive ideals that an upstart university on the West Coast could recenter the academic universe and change the world. On your journey, you will find that Stanford is truly a distinctive incubator of infinite possibility, a wondrous intellectual playground built for you. Parents, friends, and family, I know that you have sacrificed in ways large and small to make this day possible. And even as you want this Stanford education so much for your loved one, you may be feeling that this day, though long awaited, has somehow suddenly come a little too soon. Well, maybe for some, not soon enough. <laughs> I understand. 
It never gets easy letting your young person go forth into the world. Still, let me attempt to ease some of your concern. Here, your students will be pushed, but appreciated. They will face exceptional academic challenges, but also find unprecedented support. They will come to know new worlds, but also come into new knowledge of themselves. New students, please know that you now have the opportunity to step boldly out into your future. Now more than ever, Stanford offers you pathways to become part of something that is at once intimate enough to be particular to you, and at the same time capacious enough to embrace the intellectual dreams of this entire community. At a time when this world seems to be at a turning point, when change in one direction or another is inevitable, yes, now more than ever, this is the best time to be at Stanford. And so, embrace it. Enjoy it. Relish it. Make it your own. And do not hesitate to let it remake you as well. For rest assured, Stanford will change you. And in turn, you will change all of us. And it starts here, now, today. Thank you. Now it is my pleasure to introduce the student speaker, Deb Nils Sir, from the class of 2017. Thank you, Vice Provost Elam, for the introduction, the words, and everything you do for all of us here. Good afternoon, new students, families, President Tessier Levine, Provost Echemendi, Vice Provost Elam, both Dean Shahs, faculty members, and trustees. I'd like to start with a survey for the first year students and transfers. Everyone listening? Great. Here's the question. Raise your hand if you know what you want to major in. OK, hands down. Now raise your hand if you have absolutely no idea. If you have your hand up, don't worry. At any time, almost half the student body says they're undecided. That is totally fine. If you stay open-minded and search for what you love, not knowing can be an incredible blessing. After all, your time here is so much more than the piece of paper you get at the end. For the first time ever, your time is not scheduled, your courses are not picked out for you, and you can pick any field and work under its giants. That's an opportunity so incredible that it is terrifying. I've experienced that myself. During my own admit weekend, I was broadly interested in physics and political science. I wanted to understand the laws of nature and of society. But by my freshman fall, I was engrossed in the wonderful new world of computer science. Like hundreds here, I completed the introductory series, and I spent way too many late nights debugging very failing code. But unlike many others, I didn't love it. I realized in my sophomore fall that, unfortunately, I had autopiloted my first year here. I chose computer science because of brilliant peers and great faculty, courses, and research. Of course, all of those are why our department is one of the best in the world. But that didn't automatically make it the right fit for me. I resolved to find what I was really interested in and hopefully use CS along the way. So if I were in your shoes, I would do three things differently in my first year. I would think deeply about my interests, talk to lots of people for advice, and keep as many doors open as possible through my coursework. That brings me to one of my favorite things about Stanford. Doors that seem shut are almost always still open. My sophomore and junior years brought about intense exploration. To find my real interests, I worked on research projects under six different professors in four different disciplines, ranging from quantifying congressional polarization through natural language processing to optimizing complicated linear algebra operations. I took classes from seven departments as diverse as material science and religious studies. I talked to countless people for advice, 
and I found a passion in public service through coaching debate in East Palo Alto, as well as helping found Stanford's first computer science for social good student group. Plus, thanks to Stanford's incredible study abroad opportunities, I studied math at Oxford, researched artificial intelligence in Scotland, and traveled around Western Europe along the way. All of that is what I think makes Stanford truly incredible. My story is just one of many. Nowhere else has so many opportunities, and nowhere else keeps quite as many doors open just enough. Thanks to all of that support, it is totally okay to intellectually wander until you have found what feels right. Sometimes that goes full circle. Trying different research projects helped me find a cross section that I think is really cool. My summer research applied artificial intelligence to political science by converting images into useful information for social scientists. And through graduate computer science classes, I found incredible uses of math to explain the world, the same wonder that drew me to physics a few years ago. Before you know it, you'll be in my shoes. The question we started with, what are you majoring in, will be replaced by one a lot better. What are you interested in? After all, the point of a Stanford education is not the major on your diploma. Rather, it's finding what makes you intellectually tick, the driving forces for a lifetime of living and learning. Class of 2020 and transfers, welcome to a new chapter in your lives. Come in with an open mind and soak in all the advice you can find. Try new things, see where they take you. It will be an incredible journey, and that is what you will remember. Welcome to Stanford. It is now my honor to introduce Stanford's 11th and new president, Mark Tessier Levine. Well, thank you, Debnil, for those warm and encouraging remarks. Parents and incoming students, welcome to all of you. Welcome to Stanford. I'm really excited to be here to give you your official welcome to the Stanford community and to say a few words about what lies ahead. I share with you an unusual variety of emotions and feelings, including excitement, awe, and trepidation and while I think this will be the case to some extent for me at the beginning of every academic year, it is especially the case today as this is my very first year as Stanford's president. As we enter the new year together, I want to share a few thoughts about some things that will happen while you're at Stanford. You're going to embark on an odyssey of learning and self-discovery as you pursue both academic and extracurricular activities. You're going to find an area of study to focus on, and you're going to make lifelong friends. I'm not here to go through the details of these things. You'll hear a lot about that in the days ahead. But I do want to give you a bit of advice. Although I don't know you individually, I do know something about each of you. You chose to come to Stanford, and as Dean Shaw has said, I know that you've already accomplished much in your lives. Take a minute and look around the quad at your fellow classmates. Like you, each and every person you see has done something incredible, brings interesting life experiences and perspectives, and has fascinating ideas. You can learn so much just by talking with them and engaging with them. One of the greatest gifts of your time here will be exposure to people with diverse backgrounds and to people with diverse points of view. As a result, you will be challenged by new ways of looking at the world that may be different from, from your own, often very different. Freedom of expression is one of the values we hold highest here, along with the importance of a community where everyone feels included and respected. The fact that we don't shirk from addressing difficult issues, but that we do so in mutual understanding and respect provides a powerful opportunity for you to examine humanity from all sides. Everyone here this afternoon, as well as the other students and faculty in this incredible community, are what makes Stanford so special. So be excited about meeting everyone and don't hold back. In fact, getting the most out of your Stanford experience really comes down to not holding back, to taking chances. 
It's an important part of your education. So I hope you will try new things while you're here. Stanford has an incredible array of courses and small group seminars. The Thinking Matters courses are a great example. They tackle big topics. They'll push you to dig deep into a subject and to look at problems from multiple perspectives. This year, you can take Thinking Matters courses on empathy or the rules of war or sustainability challenges and transitions or breaking codes, breaking patterns, to name just a few. Spend time wandering our world-class art museums, take a class in art practice or performance, or in an area of literature or anthropology or astronomy completely unfamiliar to you. Join one of hundreds of student clubs. Just as important, don't lose sight of the fact that you've come to a great research university. There are opportunities here that are not available at other schools. Undergraduates can engage in research in the museum, the field, and the laboratory, and those opportunities include the arts, the humanities, the social sciences, as well as the sciences and engineering. The most common regret I hear from people is that they didn't try enough different things when they were students. And many of the fondest memories people have of their college years, even decades later, our classes or activities, they join by chance. So I encourage you to stretch yourself. Sign up for something that intrigues you, something a little bit beyond your comfort zone. This is a special time in your lives. As Dev Debnell has just pointed out, never again will you be somewhere where you can learn about anything you want and have the resources to do so with experts who are excited to teach you and to show you why they love their subject. Even if you go on to postgraduate education, you won't have the same opportunity to just try things out, to learn anything and everything. So have fun and explore. You don't know what you might like. That was certainly true for me. When I started college, I was sure I'd be a mathematician or a physicist, but I got exposed to philosophy and to biology and now, 30 years later, I've built my career around neuroscience. You also don't know what might be helpful to you in the future. There's a famous tale of Steve Jobs taking a, a class in calligraphy. He did it on a whim, only to find years later that it helped him revolutionize desktop printing. There are, of course, countless possibilities here at Stanford, so how should you choose what to try? A good rule of thumb, is to pursue the things that intrigue you, just as Debnell did, and once you find something exciting, invest a lot of time in it. Once again, don't hold back. Some of you might be shy or afraid of joining a group that seems interesting to you. Try not to let that get in the way. Look for ways of overcoming your hesitations. When I was in college, I wanted to join the student newspaper, but I lacked confidence about my writing, so I joined as a photographer and only eased into writing over time with the support of other students. It remains one of the fondest memories of my time in college, and the skills I learned have been really important to my later career, including speeches like this one. What other advice can I give? I'll leave you with six additional thoughts, several of which echo points already made by previous speakers. First, make time for people. Stanford students and faculty come from all over the world, and I urge you to get to know those people whose experiences are different from your own. The relationships you form here with your fellow students and with your professors will be some of the most important things you take away from Stanford, but those relationships require time. Second, make a commitment to service. Stanford has a long tradition of public service and of making a difference in the world. Through cardinal service, Stanford students can engage in public service experiences on campus and off. Debnell coached debate and helped found a student group that uses computer science for social impact. These are great examples, but there are many, many other kinds of opportunities, courses, internships, and other types of programs. Third, as has already been said, be kind. Stanford is a community, not just a university, and overt kindliness and friendliness are things that set it apart 
from many other institutions. Fourth, be optimistic and confident about your abilities. You belong here, as Dean Shaw said, and don't ever doubt it. College can sometimes seem overwhelming at times, but we know that you have what it takes to get the most out of it. Fifth, remember that you're not alone. If at times it seems to be too much, there are lots of people who are here to help you, including advisors, peer helpers, RAs, and counselors. And finally, be adventurous. If you have a passion, go for it. In 1891, 125 years ago, Jane Stanford wrote an address to the university's first students. I think her advice is just as relevant today. She wrote, there is only one failure for you and that is not to be true to the best you know. So I urge you to take that to heart. Be true to the best you know. To the parents here today, I know how incredibly proud you are of your sons and daughters, but I know you're feeling just a little bit anxious too. The first day of college is a big day for us parents because you see, today I'm not just a president, I'm also a new Stanford parent, parent just like you. My daughter too is a member of the class of 2020, so I have a pretty good idea of the roller coaster of emotions you're all experiencing right now. Thank you for entrusting your sons and your daughters to us. We are so happy they chose Stanford, and I pledge we will do our best by them. And please know that just as we welcome them, we welcome you. You are now part of the Stanford family as well. To the class of 2020 and transfer students, go forth and explore. I'm eager to share my first year with you. I thank you all for joining us today. Welcome to the farm. And now, please join me in welcoming student soloists Amanda Harris and Miles Petrie. Please rise as we sing the Stanford Alma Mater. We will sing twice, first on our own, and then we will ask you to join us. The words are printed in the program. Where the rolling foothills rise up towards mountains higher, where at eve the coast range lies in the sunset fire, flushing deep and paling. Here we raise our voices, hailing thee, our alma mater. From the foothills to the bay, it shall ring as we sing. It shall ring and float away. Hail Stanford, hail, hail Stanford, hail. Please join us as we sing again. Where the rolling foothills rise up towards mountains higher, where at eve the coast range lies, in the sunset fire, flushing deep and paling, here we raise our voices, hailing thee, our alma mater, from the foot 
hills to the bay. It shall ring as we sing. It shall ring and float away. Hail Stanford, hail. Hail Stanford, hail. Please remain standing for the benediction given by the Senior Associate Dean for Religious Life, Rabbi Patricia Carlin Newman. Surrounded by arches of stone and the embrace of community, inspired by creativity and conversation, accompanied by seekers of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, May this new class of perfect vision in Stanford's rich and robust history, together with those who love and celebrate them, go forth to an adventure of learning and listening, go forth to an exploration of community and consequence, go forth to a cornucopia of gifts and gratitude, source of wisdom. You who have blessed us with intellectual curiosity and unbridled opportunity, grant us as well discerning minds and open hearts that we may use our knowledge for righteous purpose and our promise for creating a world worthy of your trust. May our study be sweet and our learning be lively. Amen. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.